if you guys think that learning finishes when you finish school, I am here to show you that that's not true. I graduated last May and honestly, it's been a hard transition. I've lost so much sense of purpose. None of my university friends even live on the same continent as me, so... But the beauty of learning outside of formal education is that you get to choose your goals. You get to choose what you're learning and why. And I have so many things I wanna keep learning about this world and learning about myself and people. So it's gonna be an amazing day. I apply so many of the techniques that I use to do my uni work to learning for fun. So it's gonna be a wonderful, productive, curious day. I am now gonna go for a quick jog because I truly have not seen the sun in like three weeks. I am remembering what it takes to be a British person. Like British people are hardy. To somehow find positivity and joy when the weather is gray and miserable every single day, that is a special skill. It really tests you. So I'm gonna move. I'm gonna come back, do yoga, meditate, and then get started with my day. Let's do it. <laughs> it is so cold. It is zero degrees. Zero degrees. I'm freezing. It is so cold. Oh, oh it's so pretty. Look at that. Crunch, crunch, crunch. <laughs> That is casual magic though. So beautiful. Wow. <laughs> so I don't think I have time for yoga because I have a call with someone who I cold outreach to on LinkedIn. So it's gonna be exciting. Let's go learn. Thank you so much for agreeing to meet with me. This is so kind of you. In order to respect your time, I have made an agenda of questions. So maybe I can start by just telling you a bit about myself and why your role really interests me. My name's Jade, I'm from a small town just outside London in the UK. I have been really fascinated with education since I was a student. Okay, that was so lovely. I spoke with a woman, she's originally French, but she now lives in London and she works for both the UN and like advising the UK government on education policy. But in particular, she's interested in bridging the gap between education policy and education technology, like ed tech. And I find that so interesting because I do think they're so separate. Like you have all these politicians making decisions about the education system, and then you have all this amazing new technology and founders trying to solve problems in the system, but they don't really communicate. And often policy blocks innovation. Sometimes there's too much innovation that it causes so many problems for policy people. And I don't know that much about policy. So it was really interesting speaking to her. I've made loads of notes. And now I can tick off having cold outreach to one person on LinkedIn and my goal for the year is to have a call with 30 people. So we're one step closer. It's always so scary putting yourself out there and speaking to people you don't know, which is why I avoid doing it. But this year is the year of networking. And I know that there's a lot to be learned in speaking to people who are working in different parts of the same industry, the same problem. This is gonna help me work out where I wanna position myself job wise. Also, I made myself a matcha latte because I got a matcha latte kit for Christmas. But I have not mastered this art yet. Like it's just, it's really not that good. It's quite bitter. I don't know if I meant to put like honey or some sweetener in, but it's not it yet. I need to work on it. <laughs> if any of you are matcha wizards, let me know. Okay, so one of the skills that I wanna improve this year is learning how to negotiate. I am a people pleaser. I care too much 
about people and the other party. So I don't know, I just psych myself out in any situation where I have to negotiate. I lose a lot of confidence. I feel quite insecure. I don't know how to ask for like outrageous things. Like I'm just, I'm, I'd settle so quickly and easily and convince myself that it's kindness, but I think it's actually just fear. And I've really identified in myself that if I don't work on this, it's gonna keep biting me in my career because every single career requires some kind of negotiation ability to deal with conflicts, to make things happen. I'm reading this wonderful resource. I didn't know how much terminology and theory there was in negotiation. I can link it down below. Like there's this idea called your BATNA, which is when you go into a negotiation, you always wanna have a BATNA, which is the best alternative to your desired outcome. Say for example, I really wanted to get into a master's program, but I require a scholarship. And I'm coming into this meeting, trying to negotiate myself a scholarship. My best alternative in this scenario might be that I already have another university offer, one that I want less, one that's not as good, but I do have an offer and I do have a scholarship there. So worst case scenario, if this negotiation doesn't go well, I have a best case alternative. And the reason that you have to define this for yourself as you come into a negotiation is to give yourself confidence and mental peace to like ask for more and to be bold and daring because you know that you have an alternative just in case. And there's also a lot of theory about finding common ground with the person, trying to understand their motives, their requirements, everything that they want and need and trying to balance in the middle and find peace so that you get what you want, so that they get what they want. I'm about to start this Skillshare course called Pricing Your Work and Negotiating with Clients. And this is part of the Skillshare learning path, pricing and negotiation for creative freelancers. And I chose to do this class because the final product is that I will have come up with three negotiation templates. And I think that's just a useful resource for my future self. This video is so kindly sponsored by Skillshare. If you've never heard of Skillshare, where have you been? It is this wonderful online learning community. You can learn everything from productivity tips to creative writing to creative drawing. Like yesterday, a class inspired me to start drawing again, which has been so fun. And recently I launched my class on there. So if you wanna know how to study based on the science of learning, I have compiled so much research and data into this 20 episode course. The first 500 people to click the link in my description can access my course and all of Skillshare fully for free. I definitely recommend checking it out if you're looking to learn more for fun. I've got a secret that I can't tell You can guess cause you know me well I confess please don't look away The silence speaks when you've got nothing to say Dig my nails and I bite my tongue My throat it catches and my hands are numb I should have listened to your advice I'm far for you or I'll pay the price I can't fall asleep. Hola! I just finished that Skillshare course and I'm really intrigued if anyone has ways that I could practice negotiation. Like, is there a service that lets you do that? Or like, is there a game that I should play with my family to practice that? I'm such a theory person. I find it so easy to understand the theoretical side like okay so i create common ground and 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 yeah i share my goals and they share their position and we arrive at that gorgeous gorgeous place in the end makes sense in here but i know that my confidence is not like that in negotiation calls now i have a bit of time before lunch and i don't know if i told you guys but it is one of my goals to start a podcast this year and like make 
like commit to it, make a proper podcast. And so many of you guys have been asking me to make a podcast, which I really appreciate. Like, thank you so much for this push. So I started making a Notion page with dream guests, looking at how I'm gonna organize this, looking at production studios. Like I wanna make it feel official. So yeah, I'm gonna work on that for maybe half an hour and then go have lunch. No, I feel like I'm actually gonna make the first episode of my podcast be about imposter syndrome and fear because I'm so scared. I'm so scared, even though like a podcast is not that different from having a YouTube channel. I just get so scared. I just doubt myself a lot. I wonder whether anyone even wants to listen to me ramble for that long. I wonder whether I'm qualified to interview guests. Oh my god, guys, you have to comment down below any podcast theme that you would like to see and especially any guests that you'd like me to interview. Ideally UK based because I'm making this happen. Like this is happening this year. Tell me what you want to hear. I want to make this our podcast. I want these conversations to feel so cozy and inspiring and contribute to changing your life for the better. So definitely let me know. Hello. So I am just reading a bunch of EdTech newsletters that I have saved up, but have not had the time to read yet. Super interesting. I'm reading one right now called 2024, the year of the EdTech Venture Studio. I have a lot of friends in the startup scene and and I'm just super interested in company financing, the positive power of scaling a meaningful startup. Yeah, I'm just gonna read these and then I'm gonna go on a walk with my dog Willow and I'm gonna listen to a podcast. I really like the podcast, The Future of Education and EdTech Insiders. Guys, you can't underestimate the power of signing up to a good newsletter. Like if you have a goal, if you want to learn about a certain industry, if you want to network, in a particular sector, getting on the right mailing list is the best thing that you can do to just start to get an awareness of the problems, the opportunities in the sector, interesting people to follow, interesting podcasts, and they're often more niche, which means the listed opportunities aren't as competitive. Definitely get on them. <laughs> Casual magic. It's so beautiful. So cold, but so beautiful. Hi guys, I called my best friend Fong in Vietnam and I just had dinner with mum. I have a German class in half an hour, so I am gonna do some yoga and stretch this body and just do some like deep breath work exercises because I feel a bit like in my head and I've just been on a screen most of the day and I need to refresh before I go over my German vocab. If you guys haven't seen, I am really prioritizing German this year. I love the language, I have so many German friends and yeah, I just thought why not commit to one? Like I've dabbled in so many languages but I haven't really committed to like fluency. I'm learning on Lingoda. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's a wonderful online language learning school. Also guys, whether you're studying for exams or for school or you're learning for fun, breaks are so important. Breaks refresh your mind and allow you to properly focus when you get back in. <laughs> Expand the belly, put up to the heart, let it out. A new day is here. That means we have the opportunity to decide what kind of energy we're going to bring to ourselves, to the people around us. How do you want your day to go? Do you want more laughter? Bring in some laughter. Do you want more smiles? Bring in a smile. It is up to us. We have the ability. And the breath is the way. 
Guys, if you are feeling sluggish today or unmotivated, please click the link in my description and do a 10 minute breath work exercise. I can't describe how much it shifts your entire mindset and how your body feels and mind feels. It is magic. It is absolute casual magic that your breath can heal you like this. I'm gonna go do German now. Sex is so sehr gut. Weiß jemand, welche Stadt Nummer 3 ist? Berlin. Ja, genau. Sehr gut. Ja. Ich habe eine Frage. Ähm, Bitte. Was bedeutet Entwert? my German class this late. Um, it was quite cozy. It was quite nice. The teacher was so cute. He was just so passionate. He was like going into depth on grammar stuff that we didn't need to know for today's session. I really liked the people in the class. We had some nice conversations at the end. Now I'm going to spend 15 minutes going over vocab and making my notes and then I'm going to get ready for bed. It's now 9pm and it's been a really jam-packed day. Like I feel mentally stimulated and mentally tired, but I also feel really satisfied with myself. And I feel like it's days like today that I feel like I am progressing towards goals that I've set for myself. Like I said, I want to learn about certain things and I am. Like today is the kind of day that future me will be really grateful for. Like so many things I did for my future self, so I feel really happy. It reminds me it's so easy to make goals in the heat of the January moment, and it's even easier to not complete any of them. But I hope this video inspires you to set some goals for yourself and go do them. Like learning is so fun when it's at your own pace and motivated by, you know, your own interests and goals. Definitely go check out Skillshare if you are interested in any of their wonderful creative classes. And I hope you have a cozy rest of your day. 